I am Edward Dennis, and I welcome you to this series of lectures on lipidomics. We will start with a broader overview in lecture one, focusing on fats and energy metabolism. In this lecture, I will first focus on an introduction to lipids and fatty acids, then cover fatty acid synthesis, essential fatty acids in fish oils, fatty acid oxidation, or so-called beta oxidation, and then a comparison of synthesis and oxidation. The learning objectives for this lecture are listed here. I recommend that you read these over at your leisure. Reading for this lecture is listed on this slide. Fats are a very important part of a diet. And the American diet generally contains about a third fat in the form of complex lipids containing fatty acids divided among saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Of the four categories of biological materials contribute significantly to energy metabolism. Proteins are broken down to amino acids and some to pyruvate and then to acetyl-CoA and some directly to acetyl-CoA. Carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars and then to pyruvate and acetyl-CoA. Complex lipids are broken down to their simple fatty acids and in turn to acetyl-CoA, and this acetyl-CoA contributes significantly to our overall energy metabolism. The fourth category of biological materials, nucleic acids, do not contribute significantly to energy metabolism per se. When we make an excess of acetyl-CoA, it is stored for long-term energy, but the only form in which it can be stored is as fatty acids, and these in turn are converted to complex lipids for long-term storage. Start our exploration in going from the simplest to the more complex, and the simplest fatty acid is palmitic acid consisting of 16 carbons, including a carboxyl group. The levels of free fatty acids in metabolism are extremely low, as most fatty acids are found as esters. In this example, the fatty acid is bound to a glycerol backbone and is called a fatty acid ester. All three hydroxyl groups on the glycerol backbone are bound to fatty acids. We then have a triglyceride, or often called triacyl glycerol. The most common saturated fatty acids are palmitic acid, which I already introduced with 16 carbons and stearic acid, which contains 18 carbons. The most common unsaturated fatty acids are oleic acid, which has 18 carbons with one double bond, and linoleic acid with two double bonds at the positions nine and 12 on the backbone. Two 
very important biologically. Unsaturated fatty acids are alpha-linolenic acid with 18 carbons and three double bonds and arachidonic acid with 20 carbons and four double bonds. In human metabolism, when double bonds are added, they're always in the cis position in the formation of, of polyunsaturated fatty acids, of which this, these are examples. You often hear the term essential fatty acids. There are two of them, linoleic acid and linolenic acid. Linoleic acid is the precursor of arachidonic acid, and linolenic acid is the precursor of icosapentanoic acid, abbreviated EPA. Turning from the two essential fatty acids, let's first focus on how we make de novo our fatty acids. And a key enzyme in this synthesis is acetyl-CoA carboxylase. This enzyme essentially converts acetyl-CoA to malonyl-CoA by the addition of a carboxyl group. This carboxyl group is later lost in the further synthetic steps. The enzyme itself has a prosthetic group of biotin, and it is via the biotin that the enzyme catalyzes the pickup of CO2 from the aqueous solution and transfers it to acetyl-CoA, thereby synthesizing malonyl-CoA. and distinct from acetyl-CoA carboxylase, there exists in the cytosol of cells a enzyme complex called fatty acid synthase or fatty acyl synthase. It accomplishes the conversion of eight acetyl-CoAs into palmitic acid, the simplest saturated fatty acid consisting of 16 carbons. This cytosolic complex of enzymes has six catalytic activities indicated schematically here, as well as an additional protein called acyl carrier protein or abbreviated ACP that is able to hold the carbon backbone as it transfers and adds acetyl-CoA's malonyl coas uh, to con to make uh, palmitic acid S steps that fatty acid synthase accomplishes are summarized here in the first iteration Acetyl-CoA is converted to acetyl-ACP, and one molecule of malonyl-CoA, the product of acetyl-CoA carboxylase, is converted to malonyl-ACP. In the third step, these two are condensed by the so-called condensing enzyme. And then there is a reduction of a carbonyl to a hydroxyl group, the removal of a hydroxyl group in the form of water, and then another reduction of a double bond. This creates butyral ACP. Like the acetyl-CoA in the first iteration, 
which becomes acetyl ACP, now the butyrol ACP with four carbons is subjected to the same set of six reactions and then becomes palmitol ACP. This palmitol ACP is cleaved by a thioesterase to make free palmitic acid. So let's put this cycle together. Acetyl-CoA is acted upon by acetyl-CoA carboxylase to make malonyl CoA or malonyl CoA ACP. The acetyl CoA and the malonyl CoA, both as ACPs, are condensed in the next step to make acetyl acetyl ACP. The fatty acid synthase cycle now takes the acetyl acetyl ACP and carries out a reduction, a dehydration, and then another reduction to produce butyrol ACP. The butyrol ACP can undergo seven more cycles, each time adding the essence of a malonyl CoA to the growing chain, or in other words, two additional carbons, until one has 16 carbons and palmitol ACP. Palmitol ACP is released from the fatty acyl com synthase complex and is acted upon by another enzyme separate from the complex called thioesterase, which produces free palmitic acid. Summarized, the fatty acid synthase is an enzyme complex that includes all six of these catalytic activities, but does not include the acetyl-CoA carboxylase. It affects the production of the longer chain hydrocarbon attached through ACP. It actually exists as a dimer of two complete enzymes as pictured here. The key regulatory step for fatty acid synthesis is in fact the acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which is the rate limiting step. There are several feedback mechanisms at the chemical level citrate, which builds up when acetyl-CoA is plentiful, accelerated fatty acid synthesis, whereas palmitol-CoA weakly inhibits it. At the hormonal level, insulin dephosphorylates the enzyme and accelerates its activity, whereas glucagon, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, which tells the cell that it has immediate energy needs, phosphorylates the enzyme, which slows it down. This occurs via the AMP-dependent protein kinase and also via the CMP-dependent PKA. Palmitic acid is the simplest fatty acid, but it is modified both by elongation and desaturation to make longer and more unsaturated fatty acids. This occurs by several fatty acyl CoA desaturases that have specificity for the position number and elongases, which add two carbons at a time. These latter steps all occur outside of the cytosol in either mitochondrial or ER membranes. Trace enzymes are themselves very complex enzymes that succeed in adding 
double bonds or desaturating the fatty acids using NADPH to accomplish this goal. There are, however, consequences of the specificity of these desaturases. The first observation is that palmitic acid is the shortest fatty acid generally available in abundance in mammals. And the delta-9 bond is the furthest down the chain that is desaturable in mammals. Therefore, one can only put double bonds in the carboxyl portion of the fatty acid and cannot put it in the omega portion. Plants do exactly the same thing, but they have a couple of extra enzymes. Plants can take oleic acid and add a double bond at position 12, making linoleic. They can also add an additional double bond at position 15 to make linolenic. As shown here, linoleic and linolenic acid are essential fatty acids derived from plants. They can be desaturated and elongated further, as shown in the diagram, to make other important polyunsaturated fatty acids that we need for metabolism. is shown dramatically by the rabbit who's eating the cabbage. Cabbage contains linoleate and linolenic acid, both of which can be converted further to the numerous polyunsaturated fatty acids that we mammals need. the two essential fatty acids, linoleic acid and linolenic acid, can be made from plants. Fish eat a lot of plants, algae in, per in particular, and they are able to uh, store linoleic acid and their elongated and further desaturated forms. And both we and fish can convert uh, these forms to arachidonic acid and EPA in particular. The whole interest in fish oils as a dietary supplement has its origins in some observations in the early 1980s by epidemiologists who compared the rates of certain diseases of Danish people who eat a Western diet with Eskimos who eat a lot of fish and fish oils. And these population studies suggested that acute myocardial infarction, uh, as well as psoriasis and inflammatory disease and bronchial asthma, among others, were much more pronounced in Danes than in Eskimos and attributed these dramatic differences in diseases to the diet that was high in fish. described how we synthesize fatty acids de novo and from essential fatty acids from our diet convert those fatty acids to polyunsaturated and elongated fatty acids that are essential.
But fatty acids are found in low concentrations in metabolism and are usually esterified, principally in triglycerides, the storage form of fat. When we need energy, we utilize our complex lipids, our triglycerides principally, by breaking them down to free fatty acids, and those free fatty acids get converted to acetyl-CoA to generate energy. Now, focus on how we break down those stored triglycerides, which accumulate in the adipose tissue, to free fatty acids to be utilized in beta oxidation. The triglycerides are hydrolyzed by an enzyme called hormone sensitive lipase to liberate free fatty acids, which bind to albumin, travel through the bloodstream, and are taken up by cells. These free fatty acids can be acylated when in the cytosol of cells to make acyl CoAs. And these are then transported to the mitochondria using a carnitine shuttle to result in acetyl CoA in the mitochondria. Acetyl CoA in the cytosol of cells undergoes reaction with carnitine palmitol transferase 1, which substitutes the carnitine for the CoA, and the acyl carnitine can easily pass through the mitochondrial membrane by virtue of the carnitine carrier protein. Inside the mitochondria, there's a separate but, shall we say, equal carnitine palmitol transferase 2 that reconverts the carnitine the, with the acyl group on it into an acyl-CoA. Hormone-sensitive lipase is activated by cyclic AMP, and that cyclic AMP also turns off acetyl-CoA carboxylase stopping fatty acid synthesis. In contrast, hormones like glucagon and epinephrine increase cyclic AMP, and that causes fatty acid synthesis to slow, resulting in triglycerides being broken down and fatty acids enter the beta oxidation cycle. Pause for a minute and look at numbering. Fatty acids are numbered from the carboxyl end, the carboxyl carbon being carbon 1, and down the chain. Another convention is to refer to the carbon that is adjacent to the principal carbon, carbon 1, as alpha and the next one, beta, gamma, delta, etc., Because people can't remember the whole Greek alphabet, one refers to the final carbon as the omega carbon. In this case, it would be carbon 16. or breakdown of fatty acids is often referred to as beta oxidation because the key carbon that is oxidized is the so-called beta carbon, that is the third carbon down the chain. Fatty acids destined for oxidation first are converted into the acyl-CoA derivative and then that Beta carbon is oxidized, a hydration occurs, a second oxidation occurs of the beta carbon, and the end product is subjected to cleavage by a thiolase enzyme, 
that releases acetyl-CoA. And then the same steps are repeated with each successive transformation releasing an additional acetyl-CoA. Summarized here, palmityl-CoA becomes meristyl-CoA with two less carbons, and with each iteration releasing another acetyl-CoA, seven iterations results in eight acetyl-CoAs from the original palmityl-CoA. be shown schematically starting with a fatty acyl CoA undergoing reaction with a dehydrogenase, a hydratase, and another dehydrogenase to make the beta keto acyl CoA. And then uh, with a release of acetyl CoA and seven additional cycles, one ends up with the eight acetyl CoAs, and these are in turn fed into the TCA cycle. You might ask how much energy is gained. And for each palmityl CoA that is generated from a triglyceride, one ends up with this cycle with seven NADHs and seven FADH2s. The NADHs generate three ATPs each, and the FADH2, two ATPs each. So with the release of eight acetyl-CoA, one generates 12 ATPs per acetyl-CoA, and this gives a grand total of 131 ATPs from a palmitil CoA. The recovery and energy calculated for the 131 ATPs corresponds to about 40% of the energy contained in a palmitil CoA by calorimetry. point to appreciate is the efficiency of fat storage because fat contains nine kilocalories per gram and because the density of fat is about one a gram of fat occupies about a cc volume or nine kilocalories per cc both carbohydrate and protein only generate about four kilocalories per gram, but both of them are heavily hydrated. So in our body, there are about four kilocalories uh, in a gram of carbohydrate or protein, but they occupy about three cc's or 1.33 kilocalories per cc. So fat and carbohydrate are very different in the amount of energy they contain. Fat contains about six times more calories per cc than either carbohydrate or protein. We have discussed both the synthesis of fatty acids de novo and the oxidation of fatty acids. There are many parallels in the two sides of the equation, but they are each essentially different from one another. For example, fatty acid synthesis takes place in cytosol, oxidation in the mitochondria. The acyl carrier is ACP for synthesis, but CoA for oxidation. The two carbon piece that is added or subtracted is a malino CoA in synthesis and acetyl CoA in oxidation. The intermediates have different configurations, the electron carriers are slightly different, and the primary tissue site 
goes from liver for synthesis to muscle for oxidation, though some also occurs in liver. Summary, fatty acid synthesis and fatty acid oxidation are two very different processes. They're not the exact reverse of one another. They are separate, semi-independent pathways that allow for very sophisticated regulation that we touched on earlier. Acceler accelerating one pathway does not necessarily mean slowing the other, but it can.